Hello, this is Payam from the Maker School. Today, I am with Nathan, who is very glad to participate in this video, and we are going to take a look at the exposure triangle and how to manipulate it to suit your needs. Look how glad he is, right? Light is the basic component of an image. It interacts with our eyes and gives us the ability to see. A camera acts like the eye. The camera sensor records images and stores them. The more light on the sensor, the brighter the image and vice versa. This phenomenon is called the exposure. Exposure allows you to create different moods from bright and heartwarming to dark and scary Nathan, come back here. There are three tools that allow us to modify the exposure of a shot. Aperture, ISO, and the shutter speed. Let's take a look at them. Aperture is a mechanical device inside the lens acting as a sort of retractable gate, letting light through and reach the sensor. A more open aperture lets more light reach the sensor and brightens the image. The measure unit of the aperture is called a stop. Here's how the stops look like. It's pretty unappealing, huh? No need to panic. It's actually not that complicated. If the aperture is around stop 11, it is rather closed and the image is less exposed. Around stop 1.4, the aperture is very open and the image is more exposed. Every time you close a stop down, say 4 to 5.6, there is two times less light going through the lens. If you go from 4 to 8, you'll have four times less light. From 4 to 11, eight times less light. The opposite is also true. 5.6 to 4 gives us two times more light, etc. You get the idea. Changing the aperture also has an impact on the depth of field. The depth of field of an image is a zone between the first object in focus and the last object in focus. Inside this zone, everything is in focus and outside of it, objects fall more and more out of focus. If the depth of field of an image is shallow, there is more blurriness in front and behind the main subject. A deep depth of field, on the other hand, will have more objects in focus and the overall image will look more flat and two-dimensional. A more open aperture will create a shallow depth of field like stop 1.4 and a more closed aperture like stop 11 will have a very deep focus, a deep depth of field. The depth of field has an important visual and artistic impact on the image. There are several other tools which influence the depth of field but all of that is the topic for another video. Let's get back to the exposure triangle. There are two other tools which influence the exposure, the shutter and the ISO. Let's begin with the shutter. A video or a movie is a sequence of images instead of being just one constant image. Usually, movies are shot with 24 images per second, which give us the illusion of movement. Movies, in fact, are very fast PowerPoint. Kind of. To capture these images, the sensor of a camera has to turn on and off multiple times. This is what's called shutter speed or exposure time. If the exposure time is set on 1 48th of a second and you decrease it to 1 24th, you will get twice as much more exposure time and therefore twice as much light. Shutter has another impact on the image, the motion blur. This is how much blur you get from movements. A faster shutter like 1 200th of a second gets you less motion blur, which is weird. A slow shutter, say 1 12th of a second, brings more of that blur, but that's also weird. This effect is very visible and strange, so it is rare to change it, except if you want to do a very specific shot. Usually, exposure time is set to be twice as fast as the number of images recorded per second to achieve a classic motion blur. One more example, just for fun. Oof. That seems hurtful. Now, 
for our final setting, the ISO. ISO acts as a boost of the sensor's sensitivity to light. The bigger the ISO, the brighter the image. But it can't be that easy, right? ISO creates a phenomenon called numerical noise. It is a destructive effect that lowers the global quality of your image. It is best to keep it low, unless you have no other choice, like in this example. Mm, we can't find Nathan anymore. Too bad. So with all that said, what can we change to get more light? Well, on camera, not that much. If you want very specific effects, like depth of field or motion blur, you have to actually control the lighting of your scene. It depends on the project you're working on and the precision of your planning. If you don't really care about depth of field, you can change the aperture. If numeric noise is not a problem, get some. This is all about what you need in what circumstances. We merely scratched the surface of the effects of the exposure triangle on the image. There's much more to learn, but now you have the basics, and we look forward to making other examples. See you next time.